It's almost fall, and one of my absolute favorite things about this time of year is the Small Press Expo. SPX is a convention. It's held in Baltimore, Maryland this time every year, and it focuses on independent, self-published, and alternative comics. It's a pretty big convention, and there's just so much passion. I love the stuff you can find there. You can find interesting autobiographies. You can find hilarious comics. You find some really amazing stuff. And I can't be there this year. I live out on the West Coast now, and it wasn't easy to get back. But it got me thinking of alternative comics. One of the biggest, longest running alternative comics that's won tons of awards is Love and Rockets. In 1981, the brothers Jaime and Gilbert Hernandez started Love and Rockets. Each of them told their own stories within one comic, but they were sort of soap opera realistic stories about Latino characters. Uh, and it wasn't superheroes per se, although there was some sci-fi in Jaime's early work. In 1981, what they did was they self-published the first issue of this comic, and they sent it to the Comics Journal. It was one of the very few publications about comics at the time, and it was published by Fantagraphics, uh, a publisher of alternative comics. They loved it. They decided to republish it in 1982 to a wider audience, and they've been publishing it ever since. So this is a very long-running comic with characters that age and stuff. Uh, I especially love the characters and storylines that Jaime Hernandez works on. Uh, so you know what? Fantagraphics is right here it's in Seattle. Let's go over there. We're going to find an issue of Love and Rockets. Then we're going to talk about the tropes that it has. And I'm going to take a shot every time I see one of the tropes. Let's do it. In 1976, Gary Groth co-founded Fantagraphics Books right here in Seattle. They've been a publisher in the alternative comic scene ever since then. They're huge, uh, one of the largest independent publishers, and they've brought some amazing talents to the forefront. I mean, we're talking Chris Ware, Joe Sacco, uh, the Hernandez brothers, Peter Bagg, uh, Daniel Klaus, Chris, Charles Burns, Charles Burns. So many great talents. Anyway, they're right here in Seattle. Let's find something cool in here. This is a great place. All right, so this is the issue that I got. It is volume 11 of the um, initial trade paperback collection of Love and Rockets. And this is when the sort of first volume of the stories uh, ended somewhere in like the uh, mid 90s. Uh, shortly after that, it, it went on a small hiatus and then it came back with a volume two same characters and storylines, etc. So it's not too important uh, to keep up with that. But this is towards the end of that initial run. We're talking mid-90s. So these characters have been around for over a decade. Uh, and this is specifically Jaime Hernandez's stories. So we're going to read one of these. But first, let's go over. Here are some of the tropes you could expect to see in any given issue of Jaime Hernandez's stories in Love and Rockets. Character flashbacks. References to the L.A. punk rock scene. Izzy being weird for weirdness's sake. Maggie complaining about her weight. Kids as comic relief. Nudity. Sex. Hopi making a morally questionable decision. Pro wrestling. Maggie doing something embarrassing. 
references to superheroes existing in their world. A large cast of characters. Tension between different groups of friends. Aggressive lesbians. Parties. Cartoony faces for an extreme reaction. Beads of sweat coming off someone's head. So I know this is the middle of a storyline, but trust me, it's short. I'm going to explain it to you. It's going to make sense. Let's just get right into it. The story begins with Maggie and Hopi, the two main characters in this book who have for a long time been the best of friends and occasional lovers. They're together at a party. Now, this is a big deal because these characters had gone off on their separate adventures and hadn't seen each other for about two years of the storylines in the comics. So it was a pretty big deal for them to finally reconnect. Uh, anyway, it's also one of the tropes of this series. They're at a party. This is a comic about people. Parties are a great way to have a lot of people interacting socially. And uh, so, parties. Back to my gin. Mm, that's a pretty big one. Whew. <coughs> So while these two are at the party, uh, Maggie finds a carton of orange juice and it has a Have You Seen Me on the back. You might remember that. I don't, they don't really do that anymore that I'm aware of, but the back of milk cartons and OJ cartons would sometimes have Have You Seen Me and they'd have people that were missing. It was just, you know, it's something that everybody has, so it keeps you aware of missing people. There's a picture of Hopi on the back and she's not sure which of her friends is doing this, but she's sure that it's a prank. Maggie says, you know what, I like the picture, I'm going to keep it. And she pours out the orange juice so that she can rip the picture off. Um, and then Hopi's like, uh, so what are people supposed to mix their drinks with? She gets embarrassed. Boop, flop sweat. Uh, beads of sweat coming off of her. Obviously something that comics have been doing for a very long time, but it's something that you see more in comic strips as compared to something that's a little bit more realistically drawn. But Jaime Hernandez loves them, and so we've got that panel of Maggie having flop sweat. And that's another trope. Sweat beads. These stories, these comics are like, usually about 14 page stories, but uh, I feel like I'm going to come across a lot of tropes. I'm a little nervous. I hope I don't come across too many. It would honestly be nearly impossible to explain the backstories of every character that we come across in this. There's a lot of characters uh, in this story, in this party. Uh, it's too much. But Mary is one of the friends of both Maggie and Hopi, and they're actually staying, uh, crashing on her flat at this point in time. Mary shows up with uh, some of her other friends. That's all you need to know for now. But one of the friends that Mary brings along is Rosa, who's sort of a butch lesbian, and she's actually pretty aggressive. She aggressively hits on Maggie. Uh, there's a lot of lesbian characters throughout these stories because both Maggie and Hopi are, are uh, well, they're actually sort of bisexual, but uh, they're also gay, uh, and, and there are lots of queer characters. But Rosa's pretty aggressive, as you can see here. And so that's another trope. That is the aggressive lesbian. Probably not the only one will see this issue. <sighs> the things I do for you. The person hosting the party is their friend Pat, but Maggie and Hopi have sort of managed to offend some of her friends and they decide to leave the party. Uh, as they leave the party, Maggie does something embarrassing. She, she thinks that Pat is hitting on her and she tries to politely let her down, but Pat wasn't hitting on her. Maggie is definitely the kind of character to put her foot in her mouth. So that's the trope of Maggie doing something embarrassing. but. It also displays the tension between different groups of friends. Uh, they work in many different social circles, so you put that together and feelings are bound to get hurt. That's why the comic is so interesting, though. I mean, these people are realistic, and yet 
people are always arguing in real life over all sorts of things. So, I don't know, it's very, very relatable, no matter who you are, what kind of background. I think that this comic is very relatable, very interesting. All right, let's see here. Whoa. <laughs> I gotta psych myself up for this, folks. This is not easy. <laughs> My mouth feels like it's on fire. It tastes good. It definitely tastes good. Ooh. Yeah, I already feel a little weird. That's uh, five shots within, what, like six pages or something? Maggie and Hopi head back to Mary's apartment and they realize that Mary has put their bags out in the hallway. She's kicked them out without even telling them. Uh, why? She got offended when uh, Maya revealed that the three of them all used to hang out and stuff because Mary, nice enough person, she gets offended when she's left out of stuff. So she kicked them out. And uh, that leads right directly into a flashback when Maggie, Hopi, and Mary were hanging out just singing punk rock songs with a bunch of uh, their friends, uh, many of whom are still around in the comic. It's, it's kind of interesting, like Doyle. Doyle's here. Anyway, uh, the important thing is this is a character flashback. Uh, it's also a reference to the L.A. punk scene, so that's Another two tropes in a row, isn't it? That's a uh, flashback, punk rock scene. I'm <laughs> having so much trouble thinking straight already. <laughs> uh, so the three of them are singing songs and stuff, and uh, a little riot breaks out, so they have to run away. And the three of them bump into Terry. Terry is in a... Uh, Terry is in Hopi's band back then in the 80s, and she always sort of had a, a crush on her. Uh, Terry had a crush on Hopi. Oh my god, I'm having so much trouble keeping this straight. <laughs> and uh, the fact that she's hanging out with Maggie kind of offends her and stuff. But she, uh, they're, they're friends, and uh, they get in Terry's car. And Terry takes them to a party where they say that they can get some speed. Excuse me, I'm burping. Whew. And uh, in walks this exceptionally butch, aggressive, lesbian character who says she'll fuck anyone. Someone's going to get fucked. She grabs Maggie and takes her into a bedroom. And this has been Terry's plan all along. But is it evil? Let's just wait and see. Hold on. Oh! I almost missed the trope. Oh no, I got a drink. <laughs> when when the lesbian grabs <laughs> Maggie, look at her face. Very cartoony. Very cartoony. There we go. Cartoony faces. Oh my god, how many tropes is this? This is eight? Ugh. Centering myself. She grabs Maggie, pulls her into a room, and says, I won't fuck you if you can tell me who that is. She points to a picture on the wall. Cut to, nobody gets fucked. It was a pro wrestling icon. This butch lady is a pro wrestler herself. She looks up to and admires this certain female pro wrestler who happens to be Maggie's aunt. Pro wrestling was actually a big part of this comic. So there we go, pro wrestling. That's a trope, that shows up. Oh my God. Oh, I didn't take a shot for that. I didn't take a, sh okay. So it's, it's three shots, isn't it? Oh my goodness. I'm, uh, I'm getting sweaty. I love comic books, man. They're just such an interesting medium. You can do so much with them. Okay. Okay. Let's get back to the story. Back to the present. 
Maggie realizes that when she left the party, she grabbed the wrong coat. And the, even though it's a nicer coat, as Hopi points out, the reason she's upset is she actually wanted that picture of Hopi, the young picture of her that was on the uh, orange juice carton. Um, and as they're, uh, as, uh, oh, uh, the, um, <laughs> okay, okay, I can do this. Maggie heads back to the party to exchange coats. When she's outside of the building, some of Pat's friends come out, and they're sort of making weird jokes about various ethnicities, including Mexican. And uh, that just pisses Maggie off. Pisses her off royally. Um, so, anyway, yeah, that, that uh, Latina background comes into play, and actually Hopi and Maggie get into an argument here because, um, oh my god, I'm having the hardest time focusing, because Hopi says that Maggie doesn't necessarily look super Latina, so sh she isn't offended by this because she can hide her ethnicity if she feels like pretending she's white, and you know, Hopi's like, what? Like, who says that I do that or want to do that? Like, why are you being like this? And so they sort of uh, have a little bit of a spat and uh, head their separate ways. And the issue ends with the reveal that Maya took Maggie's coat, but really just so that she could have that picture of Hopi when she was young. Uh, so I guess she still has like a crush on them or something. Am I making sense? I've lost track. I'll tell you what, though. I mean, I, I didn't even tell you about half the characters that show up in this that are at least recurring characters. Because it had a large cast. That's, it's, that's a trope. Um, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Where, where did I put my tape? Hmm... I've completely lost track of the other things I need to get done today. The story's over, no more shots! So, Love and Rockets is a pretty dope comic. I think it helps to show all the different things you can do with comics. That's why you know, I'll do a lot of superhero stuff. There's a lot of amazing creators that have done superhero comics that I love and respect, but there's also a lot of love in my heart for alternative and indie comics. Eleven Rockets is one of the longest running and most successful, so I felt like I had to take a look at it. Um, I hope that there's some fans out there that enjoyed that. Uh, if you haven't read it before, all I can say is I recommend it. Start at the beginning. I'll tell you what's weird. When the story began, Maggie was a mechanic. And her world was, like, very sci-fi when the stories began. Uh, she would... She was in a world with superheroes and robots and spaceships. Pretty different than what we just read. Then she would, like, visit these friends of hers back in the fictional town of, I think it was called Hoppers, California. The brothers that made this grew up in Oxnard, California, so a lot of this is, to a degree, hagiographic. Hey Not autobiographical, but they took stuff from their real life and, uh, and would incorporate it into these stories. Anyway, you know what? I just realized I'm drunk, I'm feeling good, I could just go on about comics forever, but I gotta just end the video. I gotta end the video. Next week, I have something very silly and fun planned for back to school week. I've got some good superhero tropes coming up. I've got more travels coming up uh, that will involve comic book stores and guest stars. And uh, there's some really great stuff. Until then, keep reading comics.